Okay, I got bounced out of Rita Inspired's live. So I said we would come back on if I got bounced off. So I am back on and we are talking about Rosh Hashanah. Hopefully she'll come on. And uh, we are talking about Rosh Hashanah and hi, Panina. Um, and uh, we are talking about being single by design, not by punishment. And uh, the fact that Rosh Hashanah is coming and how do I go into Rosh Hashanah with a different kind of men mindset? You know, being single for many, many years, as many of you know, I, I really, really empathize and feel very sensitive to this time of year and the dread that I felt really going into Rosh Hashanah um, and feeling alone and feeling, I can't believe I'm here again. I can't believe I'm in the situation. So I was just talking to, with Rita, I mean, with Bianca, but um, about the fact that, um, I hope that, I don't know if that's her. Someone sent me a request um, that we have to be compassionate. We have to be acknowledging of our feelings. You don't have to pretend, right, to be all Brach Hashem, right? I called the Brach Hashem syndrome. Brach Hashem, my house on fire. Brach Hashem. Um, <laughs> you don't have to do that. You can be real, and you can be uh, you can be connected to your true self. And God knows where you're really at. There's no point in um, being fake. Yeah, so we were talking about that. We were talking about our journeys and how really um, it's about giving that power to Hashem, but also at the same time, knowing that I'm exactly where I need to be. And even if this is not what I want, I'm allowed to own the feelings that I'm sad or this is not what I want, right? And it's okay because I know you're in charge, God, and you have a plan for me. And this is not how I'm in the middle of a story. I'm in the middle of a book and I'm in the middle of one chapter in the book. And I don't know what's going to happen next. The reason we get often so upset and despairing is because we think this is it. This is, this is how it's going to end, right? The Yitzhahara, the self-sabotage voice, really does a number on, on us that I don't think it's ever going to happen. And whenever you jump forward into the future and you assume something's going to happen a certain way, the worst case scenario. By the way, why do we always visualize the worst case scenario? We're always invested in the picture of the worst case scenario. And... Um, rather than the best case scenario, which is very interesting because it has no more probability than the best case scenario. But anxiety is often the result of focusing on what we don't want. Yeah, what we don't want. So we want to be able to focus on what we do want. What about going into Rosh Hashanah with what we do want? Ah, she's here. Yay. Let's see if this works. Wants Rita inspired to be in here, Bianca. See if she comes in. She's joining. I think it's your internet. Hi, you're back. Okay, if you have this time, continue. Well, go, go for it. Welcome <laughs> to my room. <laughs> welcome. So we're just, I, was, I was just giving a recap. I don't know what happened to the old one. I don't know if you, did you save it? It, it didn't even let me. It's just like- I know, it's weird. I think, I think it's one of our internets and I don't know who. Yeah. But um, it's okay. It's, it is what it is, right? God's in charge. So, um, so we were just saying how Rosh Hashanah is the reconception, the conception of our whole year and that we should not assume to go into the new year with everything we just had. So we take so much for granted in our lives, so that our family, our work, our health, our everything. And that this is a, a reevaluating of everything. And so, so too, everything can change for the good, you know, or for the challenging. In a second, we assume we should just have everything we have and I want more. But we don't. We really have to be humble, all of us, every single person, to the fact that we're being recreated anew, and we have the power on Rosh Hashanah to hold ourselves in a certain way and determine what kind of year we want based on also where our mindsets at. And so I think that we were talking before about uh, the fact that we also let we with a lot of judgment. There's a lot of pressure in society, and there's a lot of about being single, and then we choose to also subconsciously. It happens very fast to judge ourselves with that. So there, there is judgment, there is judgment, there is pressure, it's objectively a problem and we definitely should work at changing that narrative which my good friend Sephora Grodko is doing amazingly um, and we have I've had a number of discussions about it. But internally as singles, what can we do? We don't have to continue that judgment. If, if someone throws you something and you don't catch it, what happens to it? It drops. You don't have to receive all the judgment and continue that judgment. We talked about Hashem is making judgments, discernments from love on Rosh Hashanah. He's not judgmental at all. 
And so we shouldn't be also on ourselves. So I think let's go into a, you talked a little bit about um, the Shidduch system and how it is flawed objectively, and it's okay to acknowledge those flaws, right? Every dating system is flawed, where, you know, whether it's secular, whether it's observant, whether, whether it's all flawed, and we have to navigate that system with, with its flaws, you know, trying to get the best out of it and, and then protecting ourselves from the other parts of it. So I think you wanted to share something about that too. So yeah, I think that an important point is, um, that I ended up learning slowly on the journey was that um, this social pressure, whether it's between the Shachanim or between friends or social media, I think if we realize that the goal is not to get married, the goal is eventually to be married and stay married. That's a very different goal because yeah. getting married one night, being married is the rest of your life. And you want to look back at your wedding day and say every day and say, Oh my God, I thought I loved him yesterday. I thought this was united yesterday. It's so much bigger. It's so much bigger. You want to bring that union closer and closer and Hashem will throw challenges at you to come closer. So the point of that is, is that when that, when the goal shifts to, to being married versus getting married, um, I thought for me, it gave me a lot of strength to realize like, okay, wait, there's a lot that I need to show up at the table with to be married and to stay married and to grow married. Um, so I think that that's the, that's a very different goal. Um, and another tip of the social, you know, the, the social pressure is um, to realize that we're not on anyone's timeline. There's no race. There's no, and like you said before at the beginning with like, I, I don't know which one, because it got cut, but you had said that, you know, um, some people needed that while they're married. Some people needed to discover themselves alone and then come to the marriage. And everyone has their journey. And um, it's funny, when my husband introduced me right before getting engaged to his rabbi, he told us something and it was really interesting. And he deals also with a lot of couples, um, either freshly married or getting married or married for a while. And he said he noticed, and this says, God forbid, nothing bad on someone who got married young. But he was saying that a lot of the couples that did get married young were the ones coming to them because they had a lot more... Um, to shape themselves and which is normal because they there was a lot that they were discovering of themselves which is also beautiful to discover it together um and he said the ones that you know struggled through it appreciated so much more even the flaws in their partner and they were able to navigate those problems in a, in a very different maturity level not because god forbid they got married younger not mature it was just they didn't have that life on experience with themselves with hashem with challenges they're doing it with their husband which is also beautiful but i think that was a really important uh, reminder and there was so much that i learned while engaged um that i said this is crazy the single girls and boys should be hearing this like why am i hearing this engaged like <laughs> oh you're in the house you're the full energy you're the bracha you're all of a sudden i went from this profile that i have to go and chase and did she answer and did this and did that and maybe i should travel here today and maybe and all of a sudden you're the queen of the home and I think that's important for both mm. men and the woman, because I, for me, that's what they were telling me as a woman, but a man also has his part of what he becomes unmarried. And I think we need to that single. We shouldn't be learning that when we're engaged. We shouldn't be learning that when we're married. We should be learning that now. Um, right, because the perspective is when I'm single, I'm, I'm a nebuch, I'm a loser. You know, like I'm nothing. There's a second, and then what, what that does, and this is what we were gonna segue into as well, is that really chips away at a healthy person's self-worth. And a healthy, the person that didn't really have a self-esteem or self-worth issue can be broken and destroyed by that attitude and mindset everywhere. And that it's sort of unspoken. I felt there's an unspoken judgment of like, mm, there must be something wrong with you, exactly. you know? Oh. And like, like there's just like this knowing, like, you know, in the patronizing and the whole, and then I bought into it, you know? So I think that there's, it chips away at the self-worth and then that becomes tragic and devastating. Why? because your own value with yourself and your relationship with yourself is what determines your relationships with others. It really is a mirror back and forth. And if you disrespect yourself, God forbid, you'll often attract disrespect, meaning you'll tolerate it. So you, you show people how they can treat you by, by, based on what you can tolerate and what you don't set boundaries around. And so you only do that if you don't value yourself. And so I think it's, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and a toxic cycle of of this lack of self-worth and then it fuels itself. Then how can you date from, from your best self if you're exactly. feeling terrible? And so we want to touch on a little bit of that today about self-worth and about the fact of like really working on as a single tapping into your love, your lovableness, if that's a word. And if the fact that you are worthy and good, no matter what, and you don't have to get married then to be successful and good. Right. Exactly.
Exactly. I actually had a big, big feelings about that one. Um, like you said on dating, there's, it's, it's, it's hard because you'll go through like waves of it because then you'll get, you'll be like on a high no, you know what? I'm good. This, that, and then you'll either get the rejection or a weird date or a weird scenario. And there's so much that will throw that off. So be prepared that that self-worth will be. But at one point we have to keep looking at it as inside out because like, like you said, you're going to attract whatever you feel you deserve. So the more you're going to build up that inside, the more it's going to reflect on the outside. And it doesn't mean like you'll magically never get a bad date, but you'll be able to let, like, like you said, what, if you don't catch it, it just bounces back. So it'll just bounce back. Like, okay. This says nothing about me. This says nothing about me. This rejection says nothing about me. This bad date says, the no date says nothing about me either. And we want to get to a place because you're going to need this married and you're going to need this for every phase of life where of course there's things that still shake us, but at the foundation, there's like this strong pull that nothing could put, put down the belief that I have in myself. And I know it's an extreme example, but there's a lot of stories um, of either like, God forbid the Holocaust, or there was someone in uh, uh, living in Muna that he brought up a story. I'm not going to go through the whole story, but he was in, in prison for something and it was, he was suffering there and being treated bad and similar in, in, in the Holocaust. And they were saying the one thing that no one could take away from me was my belief in God. They could take away my seed door. I can't pray from a physical seed <laughs> They could take away anything from me. And I know it's an extreme example, but in our situation, it's no one could take away what I believe in. So right. if I know what I bring to the table and I know who I am, and it's more than just like age, school references, then it's okay. You could say no to me. Then Hashem is just protecting you from investing your heart into a place that, that wasn't ready to receive it and doesn't need to receive it. And you know what? Thank you, Hashem. I want to keep that for the right person and I don't need it to be with everyone. It only takes, so I yeah. think the important thing is knowing that like we want to get to a place where you could take everything from me, but what you can't take is what's inside me. I love what it. I've built. In yeah. That's very Victor Frankl-esque. Victor Frankl said exactly. the same thing. Yeah. And he, he's so inspiring. And I want to touch on this idea that someone asked about homework. Can you give us homework? And so what happens is, is that this stuff happens. And then we pick it up in our head and we have a choice, whether we're aware of the choice or not, we have a choice in that moment. Do we listen to this outside pressure and judgment and as our, our own Yetzirah, it becomes that Yetzirah, right? As the level, our voice of self-sabotage. Do we listen to that or do we not? Like what do we do in response? That's the choice. So the homework is whenever you've got thoughts that come into your brain about, even if it's triggered from legitimate real things that people say to you, their looks at you, their judgments, their patronizing looks on Rosh Hashanah, whatever it is, right? That's, that might happen. The soon by you, this year's the year. I know it. I just know it. Right. Okay. When all that happens from these beautiful, well-meaning people, you get a choice in that split second, whether you're conscious of it or not. And you can choose to say, Hashem's in charge. I'm exactly where I need to be. I'm, I'm who I need to be and I'm where I need to be. And just say, thank God. Like that's where I'm at right now. Or you can listen to the voice and say, and, 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 and follow it. We get, we get the negative voice that we get in our head. All you need to ask yourself is if I listen to this voice, where will it take me? Allah. Where will it take me if I listen to this voice? And if it's the fact that I'm going to feel like a piece of dirt, like a nothing, like a nobody, like a loser, I'm going to feel less than, I'm going to feel less than people. Then you must Acknowledge that it's the Yates Sahara. So the first step is acknowledging it's the Yates Sahara. So it doesn't eat away your self-worth. The second thing is what I do is visualize a, you can't get rid of the Yates Sahara and you can't silence it. So people say, I just want to shut those thoughts down. You can't, if you engage with those thoughts, they'll win. If you start arguing and fighting, right? What we resist persists. So as I resist something and give it energy, it will persist and get stronger. And the only way I found to, to really work with that is I imagine it like a yapping chihuahua in the background and I tie it to a tree and I walk on past, right? So that negative voice, it's, in, it's a way of not giving a power. It's there, but it's muffled. It's in, the, it's in the distance. It's not me. I don't identify with it. I'm not giving it power. I'm not engaging in it. I'm not arguing with it. It's there. I know that voice. So the first thing you can do is start acknowledging what are my classic Yetzirah phrases that I said that they said to me, right? What are, the, what are these classic Yetzirah phrases that are said to me? And, no, and, and then it's not part of you. And it's not part of me. I distance myself from it. And then I just let it be there and it shifts straight away. Right? 
So, so that's really, really important. Um, it's really important to uh, acknowledge when it's your gate to horror. And even by acknowledging it, you create some distance and then know that you don't have to, you know, you don't have to follow that voice. Right. I, I think also a very powerful homework for me that I um, heard from my Waller's team was to ask yourself, what can I do now that I won't be able to do married? And of course, there's so many opportunities, married and single. And I remember, like, he gave the classic example. It doesn't mean you have to go and do this. But he was saying, can, can a married woman with children just go and sleep in the hospital with a high life fund patient? Like, no, she, she can't do that. Um, that's an extreme example. But I think what it ignited in me when I walked away from that was, what makes me, my neshama, feel on fire? When I go, there's, there's, and I think that's chesed, but chesed is a huge category. It could be, like we said, someone maybe not feel comfortable with something so interactive. Maybe, like, there's so many realms of chesed, whether it's personal, whether it's calling someone and talking to them for an hour, we don't know. But when you find out, when I finish doing that, I feel so good, I feel more me, um, I realize that's what made me focus on the inner self. And that's what made me say, like, my life is not on pause right now. And I got into one chesed to the next, and then Hashem just kept sending me my type of chesed to me. Um, and, I, and, and I got busy with that. And it wasn't a distraction because really it was Hashem, again, going back to that ultimate goal. My ultimate goal is to be close to you. So if, if I don't have the outlet that I thought was best, I'm going to use every other outlet. And I, and, I, and I went ahead and delved into chesed, I just think is like a magic vitamin. And it really, really like, you know, we hear these things in Pirkei Avod and like father, uh, in, in the ethics of our fathers and we, we're so used to them, but we, we don't really internalize them sometimes. But it says like, oh, um, I mean, uh, chesed is more for the giver than the one who gets. But really, like, if you actually break that down, it's that when you're giving to someone, you're just revealing more of yourself to your own self. So you're like, oh, wow, I was capable of that. Oh, wow, I didn't know I have a strength to communicate to someone and give them hope. Or I have a talent in reading a book to a child and me making it so animated. I there's so many different things. And you literally just keep dating yourself. So my number one thing was, I'm going to do chesed and I'm going to date myself. Those are my two homework. And then every negative thought, I love that you put it as an outside force and turn it into a prayer. Say, oh my gosh, right now I'm in a moment that is so hard. I'm validating it. I'm not going to say, thank you, Hashem. I'm, I'm validating it, but I'm also inviting Hashem into it because that raw tears and, and, and hard moment that you invite Hashem into is literally just building that emunah muscle and emunah muscle. And it's really... Emuna shifts from being um, something I believe in to something that I hold on to um, because I know who it is. I'm not just letting go and letting God. I'm saying, wait, letting go and letting God, but who's God? Who is God? Let me get to know him. Let me have a conversation with him. Let me cling to him. And the more you get to know him, you say, oh my gosh, this is the God that's making me wait. This is the God that... Oh, Hashem, it's, it's your way. Um, and the more you get to know God, the more that the letting go isn't just letting go out of desperation. It's letting go out of comfort because I know who you are and that's enough. Yes. So I think that, yeah, my homework would be um, chesed, finding out what chesed speaks to you, Torah learning, because I didn't touch on that, but it's because it's, it's literally just talking with Hashem and not Torah learning of like just a text, like Torah learning that speaks to you and applies into, and it'll all be a full circle, turning your negative thoughts into prayer um, and dating yourself, dating yourself that self-worth dating yourself like I love that. even on a bad date that's dating yourself finding out like okay this really just bothers me okay um i'm gonna add one thing to that i just sure. put it in the chat dailybitachon.com is a website go there join a whatsapp group there's about fourteen thousand people i think 12 to fourteen thousand people listening to this guy his name's michael safty he's in brooklyn he's not a rav he is screams at you with this syrian heart of about bitachon 10 minutes a day it changed my life. And what he is all about is about internalizing into your heart the real reliance on Hashem. Not just talking about it, but can I really rely on Hashem to bring my husband? I don't need anyone else. I don't need anyone else. I just need you, Hashem. You are in charge. You know where my husband or my, my wife is and you're going to bring him to me. And it's the best. people. That, or I, I made my whole course. Everyone in my course is on it. <laughs> so like it meaning... You have to build your reliance with Hashem. When you rely on Hashem in your heart and you really, really know he's there for you and he loves you and he's going to bring you your spouse. He is. He's going to bring you your spouse and you rely on him and you say, Hashem, I can't do this. I don't, I can't, I, I, I'm drowning. I, I'm so out of control. I don't know what to do. You know what to do. I'm relying on you. 
and you really rely on him in your heart. It's not just words. It's not lip service. It has to be real. That's the work we have to do. Then he will come through for you. He quotes a million sources on this. Literally, he will come through for you if you truly rely on him. The, the problem is we don't. We get into all this anxiety and we, I don't know, is it going to happen? Am I going to be single forever? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm not marriageable. Maybe it's not going to happen. I'm going to be left out. We, I did this for years, on and off, on and off. I trust you, I don't. I trust you, I don't. Trust is a choice and we can work on it. Every time I'm anxious now about something or nervous about something, oh, no, I just want to, Hashem, you take care of it, right? I, something's really silly. I'm looking at them right now. I ordered new dishes for Rosh Hashanah like two days ago. It was a bit of a, a touch and go for Macy's because I, I don't have enough plates to even serve a table. So I didn't want to only use plastic. So I said, okay, I'll buy some dishes. Guess what? They said I got the delivery and it says that it was due by next Tuesday. I didn't know that. They said it was going to come in two days. And I started going, oh, no. Okay, I bought all these plastics to have a backup. And then I went, wait, Shem can bring them here by Rosh Hashanah. I'm just going to rely on you, Shem. You can bring them here. I said, by this date, they'll come next week. They showed up today. Like literally today, they showed up. And I was like, I know. It's because I relied on Shem. He's so much better than us. We have to do that work, but we have to do two different types of work. And I think this is really important because I see this in the Jewish world. We talk a lot about Hashem. Of course, it's all Hashem. Hashem, Hashem is amazing. But Hashem wants us to work on ourselves too. Hashem, we, have a, we are a vessel to receive what Hashem wants to give us. So we have to do two things. We have to work on our relationship with Hashem and we have to work on our relationship with ourselves. A lot of people know, we know Chesed's important. We know Ben Adam Chavero is important. Many people don't know Ben Adam Laatzmo is important, super important. Because if you don't work on yourself, you're not going to be able to receive what Hashem wants to give you. And so what's important is to look at how am I, may I be potentially getting in my own way? How am I not being an open vessel? What am I, that's not about God. That's about you. And so we want to be able to dig deep inside. And this is really why I started the work that I do. I don't, I don't know if you know much about it, Bianca. But, but the idea that we have... Um, certain fears and limiting beliefs that we've inherited, that we grew up with, whatever it was, even from loving parents, that we have playing out inside of us in the subconscious part of the brain. And they're the things that affect our self-worth. They're the things that other people's judgments tap into. And the Yetzirah tells us through those wounds or through those pains that we have from, from the past. And we have to work on those. That's part of our tikkun. That's what you're doing on the planet. It's tikkun. So we want to be able to work through those. That The subconscious governs 80% of our reactions and responses to things. 80. So even if you go to the best therapist, most therapists are working at the 20% on the conscious level, which is still useful. Insight, awareness, um, deeper understanding. But most of my clients come to me and say, I know what my issues are, why they're there, where they came from, and I don't know how to change how I feel. Because the feelings happen, like self-worth and how you feel happen connected to your subconscious, the part of the brain we're not aware of. So it is on us to do that work, to do that work internally so that we can then clear those blocks and be an open vessel to receive, which is, this is where this concept ties into the manifesting idea out in the West, in the big broader world, like manifesting, everyone manifesting, right? That's the manifesting is the, the secular thing that's gone crazy. We don't manifest. It's not a Jewish idea. God manifests. Right, God manifests, we receive. We're a Kaylee to receive. My job that Hashem wants me to do is to make sure that I am open to receive from God that wants to give. Yeah, and it's unbelievable how we get in the way. And then it says Hashem does it despite us getting in the way. That's why the finding a shidduch is like the splitting of the sea. Amazing chap. I don't, I maybe you know the source of it. I don't know. It sounds like Maharal or something, but like, right? But, but we, despite us getting in the way, Hashem can still make our shidduch, right? So we want to. We want to, yes, we want to make sure that we're doing the work with someone who works on the subconscious level. And we want to be able to learn how to do that for ourselves. You, can, not, you don't have to be all humigumi hypnosis and all this stuff to do it. You can learn how to do it even just through tracking your body and your sensations. That is one of the things I love to teach people because it's not that hard. But you have to do that inner work. You have to do that inner work to clear it so that you can become a vessel. And people say to me, like, oh, I feel selfish doing all this. No, that's, that's the gates of horror. So you have to do it. Actually, such um, a point that I always give to people about selfish. And it's the funniest thing because the secular world has such a different way. Um, when dating, it's all about 
Um, and you see it in the movies and we think that, oh, it's just a movie, but these are all concepts that constantly go into our minds. Um, in the secular world, it's impress them, the gifts, the, the dating, the huge proposal, um, and then they're married and ha we never see after that. It's, they get married and the movie's over um, or the social media and it's over. Um, and, and it's funny because people say like, oh, but he, he's so selfless. Look how much he's doing for me. And how many times do we see someone that dates for five, six years in the secular world and they do all the big moves and everything. And then when it comes time to propose, they're like, oh, you didn't want kids? Like, oh, okay. And let's break it off. Right. Yeah. Um, and in the Jewish world, when it's done right, I, again, we never judge Judaism based on how people are practicing it because it's not always practiced right. Um, but the Jewish way technically is that no, Right now is not a time to be selfish. Right now, the more selfish you are, the more selfless you can be the rest of your life with the right person. So I always say right now when you're dating, yes, you need to be selfish because you need to know, and it's actually not really being selfish because the more you're understanding, wait, is this the right person for me? Is right. this bringing out the best in me? The more that you'll be the right partner for him. And you can't, like you said, Kamocha goes into marriage too. Kamocha is the first thing because Whatever love you have for yourself is the only amount of love you can give for someone else. That's why that's the reference. Love everyone like you love yourself. So the first step is first love yourself and your spouse, your friend, your parents, your husband, your anyone. And then you'll be able to love that person. Right. So I think the most important key is to know that in dating right now in the Jewish way is be selfish. Because the more selfish you are now, you have your whole married life to be selfless. And you know that that selflessness is is going into the right place you're not just handing over your emotions and your deepest self into into the like wrong person you know like no i was selfish i took the time and i know that i'm the right person for and there will be challenges that will make you think otherwise and you will tell yourself no i took that time and this is the person for me so selfish now so you're selfless later um and i think that was a big part that some people would say like okay so i shouldn't be this picky i hated the word picky dating it's I, I used to tell the Shadrach, no, I, I just know what I want. And I have values that I don't want to compromise for my future family. Um, and I think that that's so important to, to have that, that. And it took me time. I wasn't like at the beginning. I was like, okay, maybe I am thinking. Maybe I should just say yes to everyone. Maybe I should. And I did. I went through phases of that. But I think the point is to get to a point, and this is why it all goes back to what Jackie was saying, of that inner work um, of knowing that when you give that no to that Shadrach, not only you know that Hashem, is capable of anything and we're creating the vessel but you're saying like no I, i'm not worried that i said no and now oh my gosh did i block myself up no that no is coming from a place of i know what i need and i know what i need to be Hashem, to make hashem's home and if that's not going to be hashem's home then it's not the right one um so yeah i right. think that, that that selflessness is so important to, to place it into the right part of the timeline yeah and self it's not really selfish it's self-nurturing it's self-building it's self-growth. And I don't even think that finishes in marriage. I think you have to be really careful to 100%. make sure you don't run empty when you're married. And that marriage is really a, a, a reset into a different chapter of the same things that you just have different, you have different challenges. You have different avoda, you have different um, nisyonos, but they're there and you've got to apply all the same things to that. People, a lot of singles just want to get married and think then I'll, I just want to get to the goal and then I'm there. No, then you're, it's a new chapter, but of a new challenge, you know, so so, I mean, it's beautiful and there's different, it's, there's a very different dynamics. You know, I was just thinking today about, I'm feeling overwhelmed with, with Rosh Hashanah and doing everything I need to do for work and for personal and Rosh Hashanah, get ready and myself get ready internally. And I was feeling overwhelmed and I thought, wow, I'm feeling really overwhelmed. And for so many years I was underwhelmed and there's overwhelmed. Overwhelm and there's underwhelm, but everyone at this point in the, in the year is feeling something, either overwhelm or underwhelm, whether you feel lonely. And I remember once I was, I was learning with Rebison Heller in Israel, and she talked about this, and she said, which do you think is, is just harder, overwhelm or underwhelm? It's a hard one to decide. <laughs> she said, underwhelm, underwhelm. What the singles are going through is harder than the overwhelm, because yeah. the overwhelm, at least you're busy with a million, million things that are, you know, productive. <laughs> yeah building it's, and whatever and underwhelm yeah. harder yeah exactly underwhelmed i find is like it's also a, a little bit like nothing i could do about it whereas overwhelmed it's like okay yeah. if I get a little bit of help um right. I, or i skip out on a few things it's okay but underwhelmed is like it's i feel like it's something outside me and i just right. can't do anything like it's right i remember just feeling like this void and like i can't wait till all of this is over like i just can't wait to go back to normal life 
You know, yeah. I used to like, sometimes hate Sundays or hate long weekends. Like I just had nothing to do. You know, I remember that. So if you're in that position now, <clears throat> firstly, know that you are validated and we see you and it's, it's, and there's a lot of people in that situation. So how can you connect with those people that really get it? Where are places that you feel comfortable? Really listen to yourself about what you want and what you need in its time. And how can you go and do chesed, which is what you were saying, and how about how important that is? Because there's so many other people that need you. People don't realize that when you're feeling isolated, you think you're just alone and no one cares, but you don't realize there's so many other people that need you also that sometimes that actually makes you feel strong and feel needed and belong, right? We think that belonging comes from feeling connected with, but really belonging comes from when you, when you have what to give exactly. and you feel needed. Exactly. So, so yeah, so many people need visitors and, and, and company and whatever. So I just think that that, you know, my whole Purim changed one year when I was single, when um, I think it was Charlie, Charlie Arari was talking to me. Uh, we, were, we live in the same area and we were, we were friends. And he's told me something about going from being a taker to a giver on Purim and how I remember everyone that. focused on their, what Shalach Manas did they get and what, who gave them Shalach Manas and who, you know, and I was like, yeah, I do that. And then he said, but the whole point is giving. And then I realized, yeah, why am I sitting at home? I was so depressed on Purim. I would literally be ignored and not have any Shalach Manas like, given to me. I would give my few out and then like everyone, families would give to families and I would just be like invisible, which now, now, now I, I make a point of giving to singles um, because they feel invisible. And, but what I did was I got out of there and I went up to actually my a family friend of mine who was a rabbi at Harvard and I started teaching every Purim at Harvard at, at the Olami Moor um, there, um, the Pure of organization and teaching. So I got out of the whole scene and went into a giving capacity on Purim and it completely changed my experience of Purim. So if you can do that, this Rosh Hashanah, I highly, highly recommend you to see where, where could you go that you'll be giving and not just sitting around like feeling like, oh, I have nothing to do, right? Where, yeah. I think living, living your life and knowing that it's not on pause um, is such an important, that's so important yeah. because you're gonna discover what you're capable of. You're gonna discover what you have to give and that's all those values that you're building within yourself are going to be what you bring into your home because you know what you're capable of and into your children and into the chinuch of your children. You're, it, it's all that, like, like I kept saying at the beginning is that foundation. It's the hardest part because you are setting the stage for the rest of your yes. life. It's, it's your husband. That's, you guys will have the rest of your life to that together. But like I said, it's not two halves of a whole when you get married. Your whole, you're and you're, whole. yeah, and you're both coming. So you're bringing that full circle. So when, when you do chesed right now, you're literally discovering what makes you spark, what makes you happy, what Hashem gifted you to give to the world. And that doesn't need to be happening when you're married. Right. It could, it'll happen in different ways when you're married and you'll channel them differently. But right now you have so much that you could tap into. And I'm not saying it's easy. And there's times where you're just going to want to sit and do nothing and validate that too. Like you don't need to always be on top of like these goals and everything we discuss. It's, there's going to be ups and downs. Yeah. But the one thing that I find just stays consistent is that conversation with Hashem. Right now I'm in a down, right? That getting to know Hashem. And then when you get back up, you have a new, a new um, strength to hold on to for the next challenge. And then Hashem will always send something more and more because he's saying, your emuna can get stronger. You think this is it? There's more. You can connect to me even more and even more. And that's the challenge. And that's why it gets darker and darker and darker. Um, and that's why David Amalek in his Tehilim, he says, Ayalat is, um, and that's the Tehilim that Esther said before going into Ahasuerush, and she thought she was going to die, is Shachar is, um, is, is the dawn. And yeah. dawn gets darkest. And right, right before light comes right. out. And I think that if we remember, the deeper the dawn, the closer the light, um, the deeper yeah. the darkness, the closer the dawn, then we're, that, that, that's really single, single life. And you're going to look back on it. Um, and you're going to see, like, my life was, like, on pause? Am I crazy? Like, that was life. That was what's giving me... Um, the strength right now to go to go into marriage as me and be me and be confident in who I am and know what I bring to the table and be that powerhouse in my home, be that energy in my home. So, um, yeah, I really think that 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 part right now is to to know that the chesed is more about discovering who you are. The chesed is about discovering what Hashem gifted you, and the chesed is about feeling needed because not because we want a distraction, because you are needed. needed. Right. You, you like you're. You're breathing right now. Yeah, Shem doesn't, 
there's that famous Gemara story where it says like, every, they say two rabbis were walking, they say, oh, everything has a purpose. So what's this little, um, this little leaf that just fell off the tree? And they open up the leaf and under there's a worm that was getting shade and stayed alive. And if that little worm, Hashem designed that exact gravity to fall, the, the leaf to fall exactly into the right place to give him shade, like, are you kidding? Us who have a breath of him inside us, um, there's no life on pause. There's no when I'm married or when I'm this or when I'm that. It's now. Like, it is now. Um, not only because you're actually building your marriage, like we said, but because you are you with or without a spouse. You are you. And it's so just building that confidence. And I know there's so much in the shit of world that shoots that down. But Hashem's Torah and a conversation with Hashem is the only stable thing that is above this world. It is above nature and can hold you through all of it. Like, it, I don't know how people do without it because I just, I, my confidence would be at zero today. It's impossible. Well, not well. Um, no, if you look at the world today, everyone's spiraling out of control. Everyone but, is walking around insecure. Like, that's literally insecure. what it is. And for yeah. valid reasons. Yeah. For valid reasons. Yeah. yeah. So, great. So, single by design, not by punishment. We have to work on our self worth. And this part of things that Ben Adam Atma with ourselves and be self nurturing for this period, we have to work for sure on our relationship with Hashem, rely on Hashem, and really in our heart try and come to that reliance on Hashem, which is really the theme of Rosh Hashanah. We want to plant that as our theme for the whole year. There is nothing but you, God, whatever you want. And you want to go into Rosh Hashanah saying, whatever you want, Hashem, I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to work with it. I'm willing to, I'm willing to follow you, whatever you want. And when we go in with that kind of lishma mindset, as much as we can, right? Again, it's all relative to the person. You don't have to pretend to be someone you're not. We talk very much about validating your real feelings and not trying to just fake it, Brach Hashem syndrome, but just like be real um, because Hashem knows where you're at anyway. Then that's really what gives us our best year as well because Hashem sees you're being real, you're showing up, you're being authentic, you're doing amazing, even though you're carrying bricks on your back You're in this huge test right now. And that's the test. Like, not someone else isn't in a test. You're in a test. So you're doing amazing. And working on yourself and being able to acknowledge the shidduch system is flawed. And that's okay. I don't have to take it on board. I can identify and acknowledge my Yetzirah. I distance myself from it. Imagine it as a yap and chihuahua tied to a tree and walk on past. And with that, we should go into a beautiful year. We should have a sweet revealed year. Revealed goodness. Should be revealed goodness no matter what it is. And even though no one should say soon by you, but if they do, you can still smile and say amen and just know I am exactly who I'm meant to be. I'm exactly where I'm meant to be right now. Hashem loves me. I'm good. And, uh, and, and we should all have like a meaningful, sweet Rosh Hashanah. Amen. amen. Yeah. That was beautiful. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to have to leave because my voice is literally leaving yeah. me. Actually. <laughs> but, um, but I, I think we covered some really important topics and, uh, and there's so much more to say, yeah. you know, that we could continue yeah. saying it. So hopefully maybe we'll do a part two and, uh, or a part three, uh, because I know that you have so much to give and you're so, you're such a, a fire of, of inspiration and, and learn and, and learning, you know, I learned so much from you too. So, you. um, if you want to be in touch with either of us, please DM us. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I definitely can uh, open. Like this is just starting and opening the, you know, the road for everyone to feel that we're, we're here, we see you, we understand, and we're, we're going to share as much as we can and just real, like we're, we're open. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. And if anyone would like to do any deeper work of that unblocking your subconscious and developing a higher, stronger relationship with Hashem, please DM me also. I'll let you know more about it and um, we'll see you on the other side in the, in the, in the new year. Thank uh, you so much. for uh, Thank you. I'm glad we could work this out. Thanks. Thank you.